Right. So we're live. All right. So hello, everyone. Um, my name is Damian Darrell Jerry. I'm a writer based in Memphis, Tennessee. And today I'm going to be reading an excerpt, an excerpt from my novel, um, Boy with the Golden Arm. Um, I have work forthcoming in the fall edition of Fireside Quarter, right? So um, I appreciate you for logging into my reading, and here we go. Right. Boy with the Golden Arm, track one, natural born thriller. Michael Irons hurried north to meet Obey. A nightmare had driven him from the home studio he shared with his aunt and uncle. In his dream, he battled his dead father while his dead mother sang to the moon. He always lost the rap battle, and he always died before he woke up. Wind rose over black streets paved in blank television screens. He wrapped his cloak around his bone chest, rubbed his gold on. The prosthetic limb played a rhythm that matched Michael's fear. Subwoof was knocked inside buildings arranged like rotten teeth. In the distance, a coliseum spat black smoke, black and yellow smoke. I am hip hop. Michael pointed, imagined himself and scolded his father and uncle. L haunted his dreams. Uncle Zeb worked him like a slave in the home studio. Liberated, Michael faced miles of cracked television screens and flesh craving plants. Start, starting for the Coliseum, he prayed for devastating mind control. He found Old Baby by a tunnel that crossed under a rail under a rail yard. She lifted a spray can, stared at Michael through a half mask respirator. Unable to see her face, Michael recognized her Afro puffs shifting at the edges, the crystal dust that twinkled through the matted naps. Old Baby pulled the mask over her head, grinned like a beaver. She pointed at a throw up, shining on gray fiber crystal. Pixelated head, Afro puffs, dark skin, round eyes, and a wide gaping mouth posted the wall. Old Baby's signature tagline, Oh My Goddess, scrolled under the picture. Your brother taught you to spray paint? Michael reached for the tag, but he burned his fingers. He wondered if Basky made her practice for hours without food. If anything, I taught him. Old Baby spoke in a dismissive tone like fanning a mosquito, stuffed her mask into her backpack. He used to copy my sketches till I got on his case. She nodded. Her afro puff bounced and piled the air with sparkling dust. It's not a secret, Michael, so stop looking surprised. She squinted like something drew her attention reached for Michael's face, snatched her hand before touching his cheek. What? Michael turned his head, raised his hands to cover his face. In the same moment, relief and rejection swirled in his stomach and settled in his chest like a bedrock. I thought your brother was taking us to meet that lady, Michael said, to hide the boy who never left his uncle's studio without permission. Every time you go to sleep, you have the same nightmare. Old baby's voice dimmed and went hollow. The 12 year old grabbed Michael's shoulder, gloves cut to her knuckles, paint covered her fingers. A dusty black jacket creaked at the joints, hugged her small arms and belly. Backpack strapped to her shoulders, old baby raised her eyebrows and smiled. I tell you my secrets. Can this lady help me for real? Michael started to back away, but the small fist tightened around the folds of his cloak and his heart. She's not a lady. Just have the money for my brother, not me. Old baby pushed Michael and started toward the tunnel. As she continued, she kept her stride, focused on the darkness ahead. Come on, Case is impatient. If we're late, he might leave us. You sure you didn't tell my uncle? Michael scanned the overpass, his, wide, his eyes wide, lips folded. A pair of headlights crept from the marble tunnel. Michael covered his eyes, peered through his fingers. Old baby thumbed the straps on her backpack, turned her face from the brilliance. The 
light surrendered to a passing news van with two anchors slouching behind the windshield. Hunting leads for stories, Michael guessed. He wanted to run, but old baby pulled his finger, a gesture to walk, act natural, keep moving, just in case. The van hovered over cracked gray television screens, cluttered with garbage, broken MIDI controllers, warped vinyl, empty song crystals. The reporter in the passenger seat wiped lurid paint from his face and swirled and pulsed in a mess of multicolor while the driver slammed her fist on the dashboard. Michael hid his arm under his cloak, watched the vehicle scope pass. Brow wrinkled, jaw tight, old baby stared at the ground at the oncoming darkness. Advertisements streaked across the van's side panel, promised aid to the hip hop heads, chances to join the media through casting calls, open auditions. Michael stared at the tunnel, but a voice invited him to the news van, a soft voice like his mother, Lady Celine, when she danced and sang among the living. Take a chance on yourself. Be a star. Laugh. Play with the wealthy. Experience adventure. Access endless worlds designed in our television studio. We have the perfect role for you. Come. Audition. Follow the media. The news van paused, droning over shadow television monitor. Michael wanted to run, but the voice sounded so nice. Don't follow that voice. That's how my brother got turned out. Old baby whispered through clenched teeth. Inside the tunnel, Michael squeezed the soft fingers poking through old baby's scratchy glove and crept after her through the dark. Rodents shrieked and chattered, feet padded across shifting fiber crystals. The tunnel smelled like piss and feces. Broken glass crunched under Michael's sneakers. Further along the path, a torch shimmered like a dream. Shadows congealed into monstrous forms, darting past the light, forth and back, forth and back, like slum village. The shapes reminded Michael of Uncle Zell stumbling, stoned out of his mind, stoned immaculate. He heard Elle laughing. Imagine his dead father waiting in the shadow. That's my brother's tag. Old baby pointed toward the light, called his name. Basky, she said, hope glowing under her skin, flailing and screaming as she ran through the dark. Old baby, wait. Michael cursed under his breath, checked for the fallen star wrapped on his hip. When he stole his dead father's microphone, he knew to expect a beating from Uncle Dale, but if Michael lost the device, his uncle would kill him for sure, slow and hard in the studio. Michael pictured Uncle Zell restraining him, making him freestyle, no food or water until the boy and see quenched his thirst with his own blood. Another scream, a shrill, worthy of a banshee, Michael jumped, flapped like a vulture, he ran with all the strength in his legs and the courage needed to run through the dark. As he followed old baby, the light at the tone's heart grew, and at the source, Michael's bright sweat from his bald head covered his eyes. Michael encountered a wall and a message sprayed in wild style, a degree Uncle Zeb loved to preach, despite Aunt Shelley's chagrin. Hip hop lives. In the front of the masterpiece, old baby kneeled in blood. She cradled a graffiti artist wearing a half mask respirator, a blood soaked field jacket, the deceased clutched an aerosol can that dangled next to old baby's calf muscle. Her face a mess of tears and blood, she nuzzled her cheek against the bomber's forehead. Basky, what did you do? She sobbed kissed her brother's head. A string of red saliva stretched from her bottom lip like an umbilical cord. To the essence, Michael whispered. He crouched and rubbed old baby's back. Rage and grief rolled through the nerves in his old hand. Michael saw his mother as old baby, and in his basket case, he saw himself. He tapped the pads on his gold arm, searching for samples. 
found Ophelia's newborn loop, filled to the base from stormy weather and guitars that wept for the wars of 88 seasons and the great downfall. Michael chose his words like music gems, fresh fruit for thought. He wished Bath and Case safe passage to the essence, offered libations for the hip hop heads murdered by the fascist media. Old baby sobbing like Ophelia. Ophelia? Well, you sound dumb. She wiped the cheeks, looked at Michael like she wanted to strangle him. Why are you standing there? I need your help. I'm sorry. It's just when I have nightmares, I make music. Michael stared at the tunnel. In his mind, he saw the anchors, the news van shining through the dark. Help me get him out of the tunnel. Obey the pointed at her brother's feet and the wall space opposite Case's masterpiece. Michael grabbed Case's pants cuffs, and when Obey nodded, they moved her brother closer to the wall opposite the golden graffiti. Michael wondered how someone so skinny could weigh so much. Case's body traveled like a bag of broken mic stands and wet album covers. Old baby removed her brother's half mask. His head, his head bobbed and fell with a thud. His face humbled in the mirror was light. He had thick eyebrows and long eyelashes that lifted powder like someone napping after an all night. Green locks sprung from his scalp like octopi. Stroking Case's brow, Old baby stared at Michael with pursed lips and shiny wet people. You need to leave. She massaged the middle of Case's forehead, his third eye with her thumb. I'm not leaving you here. Michael reached for old baby, reconsidered, and balled his fist. He sang against the wall, pulled his knees close to his chest. I need to be alone. Old baby's tears shine like icicles. What if the anchors come back? Michael stared at the tunnel like he expected the news van to blast from the dark like the train was stared above the tunnel centuries before. I have to send for my tribe, and I don't want you around when they get here. She bit her bottom lip and considered Michael, with all the sadness of abandoned art on her face. Did you tell anyone about tonight, about me and my brother? Why would I do that? You're the only friend I've ever had. Michael stared at Casey's legs. Sunken places in Casey's jeans where the anchors had broken his bone. Nobody talks to me but you. What about your aunt and your uncle? You never let anything slip? She looked at Michael like she could see through him, like she could see the little boy trying to hide. I said nothing to nobody. His voice squeaked and he reached for the drum pads on his gold arm. Maybe you said something in your sleep. She raised her eyebrow and nodded like she expected Michael to nod with her. What are you talking about? I wish I could control my dreams. His voice rose, but the sight of Bastion case forced Michael to swallow his pain and stare at the ground. Everybody knows your uncle is shady. Old baby rolled her eyes, cried over Bastion case. Ain't no telling what you do for a kid. What about your brother? Michael thought, retreating as the heat from the spray paint stopped the mid-step. He wanted his palate and Uncle Sh and Aunt Shelley still a stew, but the thought of his nightmares froze his legs. He understood old baby's accusations. Uncle Zeb hated the media, but he loved smoking medicine, just like Bassett case. That meant anything was possible. All right, thanks. <laughs> I appreciate you all listening to my reading. Um, like I said, that's an excerpt from my novel in progress, The Boy with the Golden Arm. And check out my work this um, this fall in the October edition of uh, Fireside. Thanks. OK, um, so I have a question from Cherie. Oh, your world is rich with near future imagery, technology, hip hop. How did you get the inspiration to build this world? Okay, um, just from like, well, I've like loved hip hop since I was a kid, but I've also loved sci-fi, fantasy, and comics and mythology. So just growing up, um, like becoming a hip hop artist myself and studying literature, 
you know, it just, I just wanted to do something that would combine both of my life's passion. So for me, this is like a lot um, like my life's work. And the degrees are like um, set of philo uh, like philosophy. And it's sort of like a code of ethics, like a list of commandments that's followed in the world, in the hip hop infused world of the boy with the golden arm. So the degrees are like, they're like laws and like mantras. Yeah. So, um, thanks. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Check me out on Fireside in October. <laughs>